Could this New York Islanders star player be trade bait before the season is over? Well, there's at least one national media outlet that thinks that's very possible. We've got that and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to the Friday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everybody who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. We've got a lot to discuss on today's show, but first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, email us at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com, and if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever's on your mind. You can also follow the show on X at Locked on Isles, and you can follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all year long during the offseason. That's hirings, firings, trade rumors, free agency, the draft. If it's happening to the New York Islanders, we will have it covered for you here on Locked On Islanders. And it's great to talk a little Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. You know, Lou Lamorello sort of has a unique way of running the Islanders. Some people call it old fashioned. Some people question it. I've certainly had my objections to some of the things Lou has done while I have given him credit for some other things. But one thing that Lou Lamorello hesitates to do is trade away veteran players who have established themselves as part of this team. And yet, Bleacher Report recently released their list of 10 players who very well could be traded this NHL season. And amazingly enough, two Islander players made the top 10. Now, at number eight, no surprise, Oliver Wallstrom making this list. And look, I still think it is extremely possible that Wally is traded before the season starts. He also could end up being sent down to the AHL, at which point he would have to go through waivers and any team could claim him. Of course, that would mean that Lou Lamorello would be losing Oliver Wallstrom for nothing, something he said he did not want to have happen. I don't know what... Wally's trade value would be at this point. I don't think it would be particularly high. I think at best, at best, you'd be getting a third round pick. You're probably maybe not even getting that. Maybe a mid or late or low level prospect. Someone who could help improve the Bridgeport Islanders roster. Uh, You know, but uh, hey, a third or fourth round pick wouldn't be so bad. Uh, we'll see whether or not Wallstrom plays very well this year in training camp or in the preseason, whether he's moved, whether he's waived there or, or whether the Islanders keep him, which still does remain an option. So Wally was number eight on this list, but who do you think was number one? And just to give you an idea David Savard of the Canadians was third. Rasmus Anderson of the Flames, second, but in the number one spot. New York Islanders center Brock Nelson. Nelson is on this list, and I don't think he should necessarily be number one on this list. I don't think that makes a heck of a lot of sense under the circumstances, and here's why. The earliest I could see Lou Lamorello trading Brock Nelson is the trade deadline. 
maybe a smidge before. Here's why. Brock Nelson is a fundamental part of this team. He is one of Lou's guys. He is a player who has been a core part of the team's success since joining the team in 2013, 2014 as a full-time player. He's had 30 or more goals three straight times, led the Islanders in goals in each of the last few seasons. So if the Islanders are going to be contenders, and let's face it, Lou Lamorello, when I say contenders, I don't even mean contenders for the Stanley Cup. I don't even mean the Islanders being an elite NHL team, which I still think is highly unlikely this year. But I mean contenders for a playoff spot. Just a team that can, when we get to February or early March, a team that still has a chance, realistically, to make the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think the Islanders will be in that conversation, whether they will have uh, an outside chance, a good chance, or be in the driver's seat remains to be seen. And it's if a lot of things break right, the Islanders could even have already clinched a playoff, not clinched a playoff spot at the trade deadline, but they could be in a position where, you know, they're gunning for home ice advantage, perhaps, in one of these playoff rounds rather than fighting their for their playoff lives. But I still think realistically the Islanders are somewhere between seventh and 10th in the Eastern conference this year. And that means they will be in the playoff hunt. If they're not in the playoff hunt, that's when Brock Nelson's name comes up as a trade possibility. Why Brock Nelson is in the last year of his current contract. This is it. Brock becomes an unrestricted free agent next off season. He is currently earning a salary cap hit of $6 million. And uh, oh yeah, Brock Nelson, not a spring chicken anymore, turns 33 next month, October 15th. Now, if the Islanders are not in the hunt for the playoffs, realistically, you have to expect that Brock Nelson would be either re-signed to a deal, which would only make sense if he took less than $6 million a year and maybe only a three- or four-year deal max, or it is very possible he could be traded. And why? Because... Out of all your players who could be a rental at the trade deadline, Brock Nelson gives you the best return. He would be a great piece for a contending team looking for a little more top six scoring, second line scoring. Brock would be there. He's got experience in playoff situations. He is, you know, a a 30 goal guy who's played his best hockey after turning 30. And you could get a first round pick, a highly regarded prospect, maybe a prospect and a pick, although not probably a highly regarded prospect and a first round pick, but you can get a pretty nice haul for the Islanders if you are willing to trade Brock Nelson. Now, should the Islanders do it? Yeah, if they're out of contention for a playoff spot and if Brock Nelson's uh, demands for a new contract are outrageous or, you know, if he wants a seven-year deal or an eight-year deal at this stage of his career, no, don't give it to him. If he wants, you know, even a four or five-year deal and he wants eight or nine million a year, no, don't give it to him. Then you have to trade him. Then you have to figure that it's time to move on. If he's willing to come back, at a reasonable rate for reasonable term, and the Islanders are still contenders, by all means, re-sign him. 
So I think Brock Nelson is a trade candidate, but only if the Islanders are really either the Islanders are out of contention for the playoffs or his contract demands are so unreasonable that Lou Lamorello has the choice of only trading him for nothing. I mean, losing him for nothing or trading him. We'll see what happens. We know Lou Lamorello has turned down some reported offers for players like J.G. Pajot or Oliver Wallstrom in the past. Whether or not he would turn that, you know, a, a good offer down for Brock Nelson for a chance to again sort of sneak into the playoffs, that remains to be seen. It would be a very Lou Lamorello-like move. But that doesn't mean it would be the right move. We'll see what happens over the course of the year. I don't think it's likely Brock Nelson is traded, but the possibility does exist. And if the Islanders are out of contention, it definitely does make sense. All right, we have got a lot more to get to on today's show. We're going to talk a little bit more about the PK, something the Islanders certainly need to be better at. We'll also talk, uh, answer one more mailbag question about some players that need to step up this year if the Islanders are going to make that jump to be legitimate contenders. And oh yeah, for our Islanders birthday of the day, uh, an enforcer who joined the Islanders in the late 1990s, better known as a Vancouver Canuck, and unfortunately he passed away far too soon. Let's see if you can guess who that is. We've got all that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. They've got all the parts you need at the prices you want, so it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On NHL podcast. Locked On NHL provides you with a national perspective on all things NHL each and every day with national experts and local insight on every team in the league. It's available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Islanders penalty kill, we know it has been pretty bad, okay, over last year. Dead last in the league, and for sure, uh, not just dead last, but historically bad for the New York Islanders. And this is something that the Islanders need to address. Now, one thing that is a, a bit of a problem, the cast of characters is likely to be the same. Out of the top penalty killers, the only one who's not on the roster right now is Cal Clutterbuck. Now, who replaces him? I would think Simon Holmstrom, maybe uh, Kyle McClain, possibly Kyle Palmieri, although I don't think that would be the best choice uh, under the circumstances. But I think overall, those are kind of your options right now. You still have J.G. Pajot. Uh, you still have Casey Zizekas. Having a healthy Scott Mayfield hopefully would be an improvement for this team on the PK. But the other thing, the other thing is this. Last year, 
the penalty kill, you know, the Islanders played better overall in the last 37 games or so under Patrick Waugh than they did under Lane Lambert in the first 45 games. Problem is that the penalty kill is one area that just did not get any better. They were a 73% penalty kill uh, under Lane Lambert, 69.1% under Patrick Waugh. Now, no changes there, but you now have a new penalty kill coach in Tommy Albaline, the former Flame and Devil defenseman. And you also have Benoit de Rosier, who Patrick Waugh brought in, and, and you have an entire training camp to figure out how you want to run this PK. So, We'll see whether or not any improvements can be made. I think the coaching is going to be important. There is no doubt this team needs a different approach to the penalty kill. And some of the problems that we saw for the Islanders at five on five, not being able to clear their zone efficiently, not making the smart, safe play, turning the puck over at their own blue line or at center ice where the other team is able to aggressively enter the zone with a burst of speed, time, and space. These are all things that this team needs to correct. Hopefully, hopefully, the coaching change leads to a different approach because whatever they were doing last year under Doug Huda clearly was not working for the New York Islanders, and it needs to be better. This team cannot improve if they don't improve the PK. You can make the playoffs on very rare occasions if you have the last ranked penalty kill in the NHL. You are not going to be a Stanley Cup contender if you are the last ranked uh, penalty kill in the league. You just aren't going to do that. And getting this fixed has got to be a priority for Patrick Waugh, Tommy Albaline, and the entire Islanders coaching staff and roster over the course of the upcoming training camp and preseason. They have got to work on it. They've got to approach it differently. And they've got to figure out how to get the job done. It is going to be important to improve on the PK. And I think it's possible. I think this th there's very little de uh, doubt that the PK underachieved last year based on the available talent. Maybe, you know, Cal Clutterbuck clearly slowing down a little bit last year as far as his foot speed is concerned. But again, this is something that needs to be addressed. It needs to be better. And if it's not the best the Islanders could hope for next year is just kind of squeaking into the playoffs, sneaking in as one of those wild card teams. And again, being first round fodder for one of the Stanley Cup contending teams. So hopefully that gets resolved in training camp. It is an area this team absolutely must improve upon. Now we're going to see if they're able to get it done. We have got more to get to on today's show. We're going to answer a mailbag question about some players that need to step up this year. Plus, a former Islander signing a PTO with a different team and our Islanders birthday of the day. We've got all that and more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by your friends at Game Time. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. 
My favorite feature on Game Time remains the view from your seat. You go on the Game Time app, and you can see a panoramic view from the seats that you want to get before you actually purchase them so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-H-L for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Thank you for making Locked On Islanders your first listen today. Now, go check out the Locked On NHL podcast where the season never ends, providing national expertise with a local perspective. You can find the link to Locked On NHL in the show description so you don't need to search. It's all part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Just a quick note before we get to our mailbag question. Uh, former New York Islanders forward Nikolai Kuhleman signing a PTO with the Ottawa Senators. That's a professional tryout uh, contract. 38 years old. And uh, again, somebody who has played for the New York Islanders, but is not hasn't been with the team for a while. The Islanders acquired him back in July of 2004. 14, and he spent four years on the island playing in 248 games, had 37 goals, 79 points, only played 13 games, however, in his last season with the Islanders, has since played in the KHL, and now is making a go of it in the NHL with the Ottawa Senators on a PTO. We've got a mailbag question from our good friend, Charlie, friend of the show. And here's what he says, and I'll try to sort of clean this up and uh, because it is a long email. But basically, Charlie says, Gil, the Islanders need unexpected players like Samuel Bolduc, William Dufour, Alex Jeffries, Maxime Siplakov, Julian Gauthier to absolutely shine in training camp. If this group can elevate their game we have the depth and talent to do some damage and charlie on the one hand i think you're right it would be a nice boost to this team if those five players in particular uh can up their game and shine in training camp but here's the what if out of those five guys One of them, Samuel Bolduc, is likely to be the seventh defenseman to start the season. Now, if he really plays well in training camp, could he pass Mike Riley to become the third pair defenseman opposite Scott Mayfield? Possibly. But boy, would he have to really have an outstanding training camp to do that. Maxim Siplakov is a wild card. He'll either play on the second or third line. Lou Lamorello said uh, they brought him in not to play in the AHL. So he's most likely going to be an Islander. But, you know, what can we expect from him? Well, that's one of the great unknowns heading into training camp. I hope we do get a great year from Saplakov. I think 15 to 20 goals is the most likely outcome. In this, his first NHL season, but we'll see. As for Dufour, Jeffries, and Gauthier, those three guys are most likely starting the season in the AHL. Now, a great training camp might be able to change that, but for the most part, you know, Lou Lamorello and Every day, as you know, we discuss this on Wednesday's show. The Islanders organization favors veterans. For guys like Jeffries and Dufour, that doesn't work in their favor. For a guy like Gauthier, to me, Gauthier is going to be one of those guys who probably gets called up first if a bottom six forward gets injured. Now, the Islanders 
still need to create cap space to even feel the 23 man roster. So it gets a little complicated unless cap space is freed up. But realistically speaking, it would take such a strong training camp from those players that Lou Lamorello is willing to sort of rethink the way he wants to put this roster together that Wa and Lamorello would have to really sort of say, okay, Julian Gauthier is in the lineup and Simon Holmstrom or, you know, Hudson Fashing, they're not. And we're going to send one of them down to Bridgeport. It's unlikely that those three players start the season in the NHL. They could, you know, move up the ladder and and, and maybe set the stage for a mid-season call-up, but it's unlikely. I'd love to see it, but it's unlikely. We'll get an idea once training camp starts, and it's not far off at all. Thank you, Charlie, for the email and the question. Again, always send us your email questions uh, to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. We're happy to read them on the air uh, and, and talk about them. So definitely reach out and do that. Time now for our Islanders' birthday of the day. And Saturday would have been uh, the birthday of former Islanders forward Gino Ojik. He would have been 54. Ojik passed away, unfortunately, January 15th, 2023. Fifth round pick of the Canucks in 1996, 215 pounds. The Manawaki, Quebec native, uh, just a, one of the better enforcers in the NHL in the 90s. Played with the Canucks from 90-91 all the way through the 97-98 season. Was part of their big Stanley Cup final run in 1993-1994. Traded to the Islanders in 97-98. Spent parts of three seasons on the island before being dealt to the Flyers. Later played for the Canadians as well before his NHL career ended after the 01-02 season. 605 career NHL games for Ojik, 64 goals, 137 points, and 2,567 penalty minutes, including a career-high 371 penalty minutes in 1996-97. He had talent, though. Scored 16 goals and 29 points in 1993-94 for the Canucks. With the Islanders, well, one of his better games, how about November 9th, 1998. At the old Maple Leaf Gardens, Islanders visiting Toronto. Tommy Salo in goal for the Islanders. Curtis Joseph, a little Cujo in goal for Toronto. All the scoring in this game comes in the second period, a third period, rather. Claude Lapointe gave the Islanders a 1-0 lead. Alan McCauley tied it for Toronto. But then, our Islanders' birthday of the day, Gino Ojik, he pots his third goal of the year. Kevin Miller and Brian Barrard with the assist. Later, Sergei Nemchinov would add a late goal. Islanders go on to beat the Maple Leafs by a score of 3-1. to one. But for Gino Ojik, our Islanders' birthday of the day, he had a goal. He was a plus one. It was the game winner, and he scored on his only shot on goal in 10 minutes and 48 seconds of ice time. Ojik, unfortunately, had health issues, and as I mentioned, passed away at far too young an age. So uh, we commemorate his birthday uh, and honor his memory. Gino Ojik is our Islanders' birthday of the day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every dayers, don't forget we will be back Monday with the latest Islanders news notes and happenings. Rookie's going to report. We're going to start talking a little training camp, and uh, pretty soon we will also be back to our regular five days a week schedule, just one more week uh, until that happens. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.